welcome. Uh, my name is Julian and I represent Clarivate uh, as a solution consultant. Uh, my role in the company is to uh, advocate on the use of the resources that your library might have subscribed for you. Uh, and for today, I am focusing on Web of Science. Right? So um, through today's session, I hope to be able to guide you on how to use Web of Science for things like research discovery, uh, identifying potential journals to publish in, and ultimately uh, answer this question, which is how do I get published? Okay. So let me just share my screen. Okay. All right, Ms. Charlene, can you confirm that you can see my slides? Yeah, it started screen sharing. All right, I can see it now, ma'am. Okay, great, thank you. So to, um, because of internet capacity, what I'll be doing is I'll turn off my video, uh, but through the session, uh, I'll be monitoring the chat box. So if you have any questions, uh, as I go through today's session, feel free to put those questions into the chat box and I will be able to address them as we go through. All right, so the theme for today is time to get published. So how do we get published? What I wanted to start with was uh, a kind of a typical uh, workflow that most researchers uh, will use when they are doing research. Okay? So although it says here literature review, uh, these steps, uh, most of these steps is a skeleton of how you would write uh, or do your research paper, uh, even with if you have experiments and so on. All right, so the steps involved would be number one, problem formula. So thinking about what is the topic of research question that you want to answer, all right? Then once you have defined your research question, then the next part is on literature searching because it's one thing to think about the, the topic, but it's another to make sure that uh, no one else has actually done the same experiment as you or research on the same exact topic as you. Otherwise, you won't have any breakthrough um, uh, in your research, okay? Because ultimately when it comes to publishing in a high impact journal, most of the time, these high impact journals come from really good publishers. And what they're looking for is content that is um, uncommon. So novel ideas, breakthrough ideas. So when it comes to problem formulation, always think about that aspect, okay? Think about what those journals are looking for. Because yes, it is good to be able to research on something that has a lot of information already, but um, having a lot of information on the same topic may or may not give you some kind of new idea. Okay? So literature searching, this second step, is a very important step because it helps you to identify, uh, even though maybe there's a huge amount of information, it will help you to easily identify gaps in that information, meaning, yes, this experiment might have been run by many, many researchers already. Uh, is there anything that they might have missed? Is there any other way of looking at this particular experiment that might end up giving you a different result? Right? So literature searching will help you to get all these um, uh, ideas. Then if you're doing literature review, Okay. Uh, ultimately, it's also about data evaluation and analysis of the content that you have collected. Okay. So data evaluation uh, allows you to identify some trends, okay. trends in perhaps uh, if your theme was on the, the, in, the application of COVID. So how has COVID-19 affected uh, perhaps uh, the mental health issues of uh, say, uh, children between the age of say 12 to 19. Okay, I'm just giving a random topic here. But if your research question was on that, you gather all that data, all that evaluate, all that uh, materials, and you want to then be able to identify some kind of trend. Uh, it, has there been a lot of studies that have uh, looked at children's uh, mental issues? Uh, has adverse effects affected children's mental issues? So all these things, come into play in the data evaluation. So after evaluating the data, the next thing is on analysis and interpretation. 
So I've already mentioned a little bit about this interpretation process where you, you look at the trends and you will be able to decipher, hey, um, perhaps there's an increasing need to address this issue of mental health amongst the youth because of um, maybe more home-based learning, uh, exclusion from social activities and so on. So all these play a part in your analysis and interpretation. And finally, uh, writing. So putting all these uh, information into a proper paper. So following the structure that is required of that journal uh, and then ultimately publishing that uh, manuscript that you have just written. Okay. So why, have, why am I sharing this structure with you? The reason is because the Web of Science is able to address most of these steps. Okay. So Web of Science is able to help you with problem formulation, literature searching, data evaluation and analysis, and um, if you're interested to use a reference management software, okay, we have EndNote 20, which you can utilize to manage your references as you're writing your paper. So let's start with that first step, which is to define that research question. Okay. Uh, I want you to think about most of the time, how do you embark on this process? Do you ask your, your professors, do you ask your colleagues, on what is the trend? Do you read a lot of journals so that you can keep up with the trend and be able to identify a topic? Okay, or are you like me when I was in school? I would always uh, go to the internet and do a search. Okay, I think most students nowadays will always start with Google searching and it's always about keyword searching. Now, nothing against keyword searching and nothing against Google, but keyword searching uh, is quick, but not comprehensive enough. That's what I feel. Okay? It is not as robust as you might think because it only sh shows you the occurrence of that particular keyword in the content. Okay? Remember when I was talking about finding the um, gaps in the research topics and so on, the gaps cannot be identified just by identifying keywords. To identify the gaps, you need to be able to identify the evolution of that, that research topic. Right. So you need to know when was that technology first discovered, how has it been applied, um, what has failed, what has succeeded in order to be able to identify those gaps that you want to plug. So how would you do that then? That's where we come in, in from Web of Science, where we're talking about citations. Okay? So Web of Science, that this platform that you are being introduced to, is a citation index database, all right? So what we do on Web of Science is we index the references of articles from journals, all right? So you will be able to see the article title, the article's abstract, and the full list of references used by that particular paper, okay? So I want to elaborate, this is not a full text database. So it's not like a, a, a database where you go in and just search for a, a full text article or a journal article, right? It is a reference index, so citation index, to allow you to explore the relationship between papers, right? So I've been talking about this um, evolution of technology, this evolution of this research space or this topic, right? How would you explore this evolution on Web of Science? You use a citation network. So Web of Science allows you to explore this, this vast network of uh, relationships between papers based on their references used. So there's three ways of exploring this content on Web of Science, okay? The first way is through exploration of cited references. The second is time cited, meaning how many times has this paper been cited by others? And then finally, related records. So how, how is this connected together? Okay, so let's take a look at this diagram on the bottom right. Okay, so there's this 2012 paper. I would like to call this paper my Eureka paper. Okay, many of men, Many a times when we are looking at 10 or even in browsing in journals, okay, it can be browsing through journals, it can be doing a search, okay, but it will ultimately give you a, a, a paper 
that would spark an idea in your head, right? So you might be reading an article and you say, hey, this is something that I might be worth exploring. And I think I need to do some uh, more comprehensive literature search to be able to get a more comprehensive idea of that topic. So that's why I'm going to call this 2012 paper my Eureka paper. Okay. And from this Eureka paper, what I can do is I can look backwards in time, look backwards in history through cited references. So the reference list used by the article, look at those articles and see how it has evolved from the past. Okay. So how did this uh, paper get published? Okay. But you can trace back all the way to perhaps 1974. But of course the content depends on the subscription time frame for your university, all right? Now, so you are able to trace back in history. The next part is to look at what has happened after 2012. So after this article has published, has any other research utilized what has been discovered on, in this 2012 one, okay? So to look at um, that content, the newer papers, you would explore time cited. So those papers that have cited this Eureka paper of yours, if most of, they are always newer. So they will always be published after 2012. Okay? So then you will be able to see the newer papers in green all the way to current year, which is perhaps 2021 or 2022. Okay? So by looking backwards, blue papers will give you the history. The green papers will tell you what has happened after its publication. So now you have that full time frame of how things have evolved over time. Okay. The third way of exploration is through our related records. So on Web of Science, we have an algorithm to um, group papers together based on their references. So if, if they use similar references, so if they share more than one similar ref uh, same reference, they will be classified as related records and they will be surfaced as a separate link. Okay. So now you have a very comprehensive way of looking at papers, not just by typing in a keyword, but rather starting from a specific topic that is of interest to you that you think would have a potential for your own research topic. Right? So when is this exploration useful? I've already mentioned some of most of this. So it is useful when keywords in the topic is not easy to define. Okay, say for example, um, uh, Internet of Things. Okay, so Internet of Things can be applied across many different fields. So in order to identify a topic, it becomes very difficult to use just one or two keywords to surmise what you're looking for, right? Now, the next instance is when we need to trace older research. Okay, one uh, example will be if you are maybe a chemistry researcher, you're always looking at chemical compounds and its applications. So in order to understand the chemical compound, a lot of times you need to trace back into history to find out when a chemical compound was first discovered to be able to then see all its applications over time. Okay. So that is an example of when you would want to trace the citation network. Okay. And when you need to see where a research trend leads you, so once you've seen its, uh, uh, its discovery, then how has it been applied and its evolution, okay? Okay, so a little bit of trivia um, for after lunch. Okay? I have three pictures on the screen here. So we have uh, sand, stars, or what you call galaxy, and journals, lots and lots of journals. Now, what do these three things have in common? Yeah, I'll give you a few seconds to think about this. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. All of them exist in overwhelming numbers. Okay. So now I want you to think about your own specialization, your own field. How many journals are there? Maybe thousands? Okay. So let's assume 1,000. And for each journal, they usually have multiple volumes multiple issues, and within each issue, they will have maybe about 10 articles. So you multiply that, how many articles do you, will you be exposed to just in your own discipline itself? 
perhaps tens of thousands, right? So now I want you to think about the amount of time you have to do your research. Okay? You probably have six months to a year to do your research if you're a student before you send in your manuscript to get published because ultimately you need to get published before you graduate. Okay? So let's say six months to a year. Okay, let's say a year. a year. If you need to look through all these articles, these tens and thousands of articles, how many do you think you can essentially read? Perhaps 52, around there. Why did I say 52? Because there's 52 weeks in a year. If you're in engineering, perhaps you have a very long research article to read. It could take you up to a week to fully understand that article. Okay? So what I wanted to, to help make you visualize was in this vastness of the information, okay, this huge amount of information, uh, how are you going to be able to select that 52 that is worth your time and effort, right? So there is this study that um, was conducted uh, a few years ago, and this study was on the journals indexed in Web of Science. Okay? So they've looked at the journals and they found out that, that actually 80% of all the citations came from only a small number of journals. Okay? So out of maybe 13,000 journals, only 2,400 had 80% of the citations. So what does this tell you? It actually um, illustrates Bradford's law. So Bradford's law states that a relatively small number of journals publish the majority of significant scholarly results. So what does this mean to you as a researcher? What you need is not the quantity. What you need is the quality of the content. Okay? So how can you ensure quality? Now, I'm, if you're starting off searching your, your, for these 52 papers on, let's say, Google, okay, Google indexes everything okay, because they have to because it's, it's, it's a free platform. It has to, be, it has to cover um, the majority of the content that is available online. Okay? However, Google does not curate. They don't really curate whether the content is of um, significance to researchers. They basically just index whatever is out there. Right? So you need a tool to be able to help you to decipher what content is important. Okay? So that's where Web of Science, the Web of Science platform comes in. So the Web of Science platform covers a lot of content, okay? but at the heart of it all is the core collection. So the Web of Science core collection is our own curated list of journals, conference proceedings, and books. So as researchers, it will already save you a lot of time by browsing through and looking through this content alone because this content has already been curated for quality and impact. And these are all relevant content that is most um, significant and beneficial to the Web of Science researcher community. Okay. So on the Web of Science core collection, we have four indexes, which are the journal indexes. So you have the Science Citation Index Expanded, the Social Science Citation Index, the Arts and Humanities Citation Index, and the Emerging Sources Citation Index. So there are four journal indexes here. Right? Then we also have the Conference Proceedings and the Book Citation Index. Okay? In total, we cover around 21,000 journals, 200,000 conference records, 100,000 books. So this already gives you access and searchability to almost 1 billion cited references. Depending on the um, access that you have at USC, okay, you can, there is a potential to be able to access back files all the way back to 1900. Now, the next few slides is very important, um, especially in today's time where uh, there are many, many different publishers and there are many, many types of open access journals and content. Okay. Uh, the publishing landscape is changing. There's more advocacy for free uh, and open science. And therefore, there are a lot of journals that become open access. 
Okay? But when it becomes open access, what happens is that the authors themselves will have to pay an article processing charge to the publisher to get their papers published. Okay? So when that happens, uh, we have been seeing a lot of more predatory publishing. Predatory in what sense? So there are a lot of fake journals that pop up. Fake journals where they say, oh, I am a, a journal of veterinary science. And um, the article processing fee is only 50 US dollars. Uh, there is some peer review, okay? And the whole website looks very real. So it looks really like a normal journal. But ultimately, once you have submitted your journal to that, um, uh, once you submit your manuscript to that journal, and if it's a predatory journal, then it will not be recognized. Okay, so how do you define predatory journals? Okay, uh, that I will come to that later on when I will, I'm talking about journal citation reports. But ultimately, you want to be able to decipher for yourself and be able to see out of all these content, which are the journals that are trusted journals. Okay, so Web of Science will be able to. Uh, become a tool for you to do this verification um, step. And the reason is because of our editorial integrity. So when it comes to selecting journals to be indexed in Web of Science, we have our own in-house experts, okay, and they have no affiliations to publishers, nor do they have any affiliations to research institutes. They are purely there to do the curation of the Web of Science core collection. They are subject matters experts, Okay. But the benefit is that they are free from bias in, from the industry and they have no conflict of interest. Okay. So when they are looking at journals to be indexed in the of science, they follow our strict criteria. And the same criteria set is given to evaluating open access journals as well. Okay. So the web of science becomes a platform that you can trust because we are publisher neutral and we have already done the curation for you to identify trustworthy uh, journals. So how, what are the differences between each of these indexes? Okay, so um, many researchers always tell me, yeah, it's good that you tell me that uh, Web of Science curates the content, okay, but I always get confused. Um, there's Science Citation Index Expanded, Social Science Citation Index, there's Arts and Humanities Citation Index, and there's also Emerging Sources Citation Index. What are all these different indexes? And um, do all these journals have a journal impact factor? Okay, so I'm gonna spend some time to explain the differences, right? So any journal that wants to be indexed in the web of science has to go through an evaluation process. If they meet our 24 quality criteria, which I will show in my next slide, they will be indexed in the Emerging Sources Citation Index. Okay. So the Emerging Sources Citation Index covers journals that have fulfilled the 24 quality criteria, and they can belong to uh, any discipline. Okay, so this covers all disciplines. When the journal has met an additional four more impact criteria, okay, they will be indexed into our flagship specialized collection, which is the science, social science, and the arts and humanities citation index. Okay. So the difference between the ESCI with the flagship specialized indexes is that these ESCI journals meet 24 quality criteria. The ones in the specialized collections have met 24 plus four additional impact criteria. Okay. Now, later on, I'll also elaborate on this in my segment on journal citation reports, but the Science Citation Index and the Social Science Citation Index journals, so only these two indexes, cover journals that have a journal impact factor. All right, so AHCI and ESCI, as well as the books and the conference proceedings, all do not have journal impact factor. Only the science and the social science citation index journals will have a journal impact factor. But if you see that any the journals are in any of these collections, essentially it means it is indexed in Web of Science. Okay.
All right. So I spent quite some time on the content that is indexed in Web of Science. The reason is because of um, the, the need to explain where this content comes from and how do we curate the content. Okay. So using this curation, you would already be able to identify the most impactful papers and easily then filter this down to your 52 important papers for your own reading. All right. The next part is on data evaluation. So once you have found the content on Web of Science, you have um, collected all the uh, publications related to your research area or research topic, you need to do some analysis. So on Web of Science, there are a few data evaluation tools that you can utilize. Uh, one of them is the Analyze Results function. So the Analyze Results function allows you to look at uh, a set of publications. So perhaps it is a search on a, a specific topic. So an example here is uh, 13,945 publications around uh, quantum physics, okay? So with this 13,000 plus publications, if you use the analyze results function, you can look at how many uh, open access articles are there in this set of publications. Okay. You can also um, look at the affiliations. So which institutions around the world is publishing on this topic. You can also look at authors. So which are the most prominent authors in this field. Uh, you can also look at uh, funding agencies, if you're interested to find um, funding, okay? or you could even look for um, countries, so countries that are publishing this area of research. Okay? So the Analyze Results feature will be very useful for this purpose. Okay? Uh, the screenshots might look a little bit small, but during my walkthrough session, uh, I'll be able to bring you into more details. Okay. Now, um, the next part, the next tool that you can use is the citation report function. Okay, so uh, if you are applying for a research grant or research uh, funding in, uh, application, sometimes they need you to uh, put in some kind of evidence to show that the research area is um, uh, still of relevance and still of interest. Okay? So by using the citation report, you will be able to uh, easily show the trend of publications and trend of citations to justify your, um, your research. Okay? So if it's on an increasing trend uh, and it's still of interest being cited, okay, then this shows that this research topic that you're doing is still relevant. Okay? So you can use this citation reports for that function. The other way um, function for this report is if you are looking for USC, University San Carlos papers, or even your own research papers, and you've identified them on Web of Science, you want to do some quick evaluation on your um, publications over time, okay, you can do so with the citation report. Okay. okay so Pat, you have a question to me. Are you going to mention EndNote? Uh, yeah, I will be able to uh, share a little bit more about EndNote uh, later on as well. Yeah. Okay, now the other few things that you can do, okay, these are uh, very useful. Okay, on the left, you have the highly cited and hot papers filter. Okay, if you are looking for the most um, impactful papers in that field, you can make use of this filter called highly cited papers to filter out the most um, relevant ones. Okay? So what are highly cited papers? These are papers um, published in the past 10 years that have received enough citations to put them in the top 1% of their academic field. Okay? So these are papers already um, ranked very highly in their own field based on citations. So by using this filter, you can quickly filter out the most impactful papers to read. The second filter here, which is the hot papers filter, this hot papers filter is use very useful to identify uh, uh, up and coming trends. Okay, so what are the research areas that are uh, of interest in the current times? Because these papers have been published in the more recent two years, okay, so only two years old, 
and they have enough citations to put them in the top 0.1% of their field. So these are um, the hot paper filter. So you can use these two filters um, to be able to identify impactful papers and trending papers. There are other ways to identify papers on your result, in the results page of Web of Science as well. So you will be able to sort your results list based on date. So um, remember I was talking about finding out when a particular paper was, uh, a particular technology was first discovered. Here you could utilize the date sort function to sort this by oldest first so that you can surface the most, the, the, the most um, relevant starting paper, okay? You can also sort this list by citation counts. You can sort this by usage. Uh, usage last 180 days can be also quite interesting where you're able to look uh, at which papers have been more utilized in the past six months. Utilized in what sense? So utilized in the sense that they have been downloaded. So that means that somebody had clicked on the link to the publisher, okay? Or somebody has added it to EndNote. So they have added it to their reference management software. Okay. So this would give you an indication of interest and you will be then be able to identify uh, some of the researchers' uh, interest for this particular topic. Okay, I was talking about um, Web of Science not being a, a full text database, okay? But we give you a link to the uh, full text where available. Okay. So say for example, um, the content that you're looking at might be an open access article. You're able to download this um, feature called, you can download this, so it's called EndNote Click. Okay. You can download this plugin to be installed onto your web browser. And once you have installed this, you will be able to immediately see from the list of results, which are those that have available full text articles, okay? So when you click on view PDF with EndNote Click, it immediately exports the uh, full text article for you. Okay, so you don't have to go into the publisher's website to do a new search. You, neither do you have to think about whether the library has a subscription to it because it would have already searched through um, your library database. Okay. Um, in the event that there's no full text available, then there will be a link to the publisher's website and you will be able to uh, find out whether you can download that for a fee, right? Okay, for um, researchers, you might also want to be able to identify which are the free full text articles that you can read. Okay. So we have open access status for all the articles. So if they have, um, you can filter this by all open access so that you can limit your, your search results to only those that are free to read and you will be able to uh, export those papers for yourself. Okay. Now there are also some uh, personalization features available, but before I go there, let me just pause a few seconds to see whether there's any questions that are coming into the chat. Uh, any questions from the audience? Okay, no. Okay, so let's continue. Now for the personalization features, what you need to do is you have to register for your own ID and password. Okay, um, if you're able to get on campus to access Web of Science, right, um, you will be able to go into Web of Science and be able to register for your own ID and password. Okay, but this has to be done um, on, on site on campus. Okay, so you have to register for your own ID and password on campus on Web of Science. So once you've registered, you're able to use this feature called Mark List. Okay, where it allows you to bookmark um, the articles. So from your search results, if there are certain articles that you think is very relevant, so remember the filters that I was talking about, the highly cited papers and the hot papers, if you want to bookmark some of these 
content, what you can do is um, select them and add them to a mark list. Okay. You can group them into different topics as well. So for example, if you are doing a uh, content search on one topic, then you want to group that list as one specific topic. Okay. Alternatively, you can also group them according to your research paper. Okay. So you might be writing multiple research papers at one time, then you can group them into um, different research papers. Okay. okay. So in terms of the number of mark lists, you have 50 mark lists that you can save. And within each mark list, you can save up to 50,000 records. The other thing that you can do for um, uh, managing your results is also to export your results. Okay, so if you have uh, access to EndNote Online, okay, so EndNote Online is there for, uh, there's a free version of EndNote Online that you can access. Okay, you can export this to EndNote Online, or if you have the EndNote Desktop uh, program, then you can export it directly to EndNote Desktop. If you want to export this uh, as a data set for um, analysis outside of Web of Science, you can do so by exporting the Excel. So the Excel allows you to export up to 1,000 records at a time. You can export either the basic fields like author, title, and source, author, title, source, and abstract, or the full record. When we talk about the full record, this includes everything. So things like um, the full list of authors, the full list of um, corresponding authors, the... Uh, addresses as well. So uh, the addresses of all the authors, the citation counts, the uh, abstract funding information, funding text. So all, all the fields that you can see on Web of Science records will be exported. Okay, so this can, uh, can be quite useful if you are combining data sets um, across multiple different um, platforms. All right, so now I will take you into the live platform to show you around. Okay, uh, in the meantime, uh, I do encourage you to put, put any questions you might have into the chat box so that I can um, address them. Okay, so to as access Web of Science, uh, you will have to uh, either be on site, on campus, or um, if the library has a uh, ability to remote access to the resources, um, you can do so. So Ms. Charlene, um, it, there is a remote access capability for users to the library website. Char Charlene. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, for them to access um, Web of Science, uh, please go to Easy Proxy. I'll chat it here. Uh, okay, so you, you're typing something in there? Go yes. to, go, okay, good. Oops. Okay. Is this correct? Yeah. Uh, yes. And then okay. go to um, Electronic Resources. Done. And then click Online Subscription. Yeah, you can do Easy Proxy and uh, the library web. Uh, last one. Uh, hmm? Where is it? <laughs> I think we have to go to the easy proxy instead. Okay. Ah. Okay, so, so you have to go through the easy proxy itself and log in first. Then you go to ele electronic resources mm -hmm. and you will be able to search for web of science. For okay. those who haven't registered um, in Easy Proxy, please do so that you can access Web of Science at home. Okay, thank you. All right, so you can use this to access Web of Science. So once you're in the Easy Proxy, you go into Web of Science, um, it will look something like this, where you see a sign in and a register. Okay. Um, what this means is that you can essentially browse through Web of Science already. Okay. And 
if you want your own uh, ability to personalize your own web of signs, then you do a register. So you click register and you follow the instructions to register for your own ID and password. Okay? You have to do so after you have signed in to the easy proxy. Okay. okay so for today, let me just sign into my own account so that I can show you my personalization features that I have. Okay. Now, if it's the first time you're using Web of Science, um, you would feel that this is very simple layout, okay? And it is on purpose. So, uh, we only have three options for searching. So you have document search, actually four. We have researchers search as well. So we have document searching, cited reference searching, and structure searching. Okay? So if you're looking for a document, the options that you have will be here. These are the fields that you can search. You can search by title of the article, uh, search by topic. You can search by publication title as well. So if you are searching for a specific uh, art journal, you can search for publication titles and that will surface the articles published by that journal. If you're looking for a set of documents published by uh, an affiliation, okay, so let's say University of San Carlos, you would use the affiliation search field. Right? There are other ways of searching. So all the fields are available here. If you need a quick explanation, just hover over them. And then on the right-hand side, there will be a quick explanation. Okay. So for today's demonstration, uh, I will start with a topic search. Okay. So for topic search, you can put in any keyword. So I mentioned that keyword searching is easy, but not as robust, right? But it's always good to start with a keyword search, but uh, uh, use the tools on the platform to narrow your search down to what to identify your Eureka paper, okay? So I'm gonna give you an example here. So let's say I am looking for anti-cancer or anti-tumor, okay? Uh, maybe I'm interested to find out on uh, chemical compounds that have been used in anti-cancer or anti-tumor um, treatments. So that's Julie, why- there's yes, a raised I... hand. Sorry, there's a raised hand from Ranoj. Oh, okay. What's the question? Ran? Who is Ranoj? Ranoj. Can you ask the question? I, it looks like he put his hand down. <laughs> Maybe it was uh, a mistake. Okay. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to start a topic search on anti-cancer or anti-tumor. Uh, the next thing that you will ask me is why did I put the wild card at the front? Okay, the reason is because I'm looking for anti-cancer, anti-tumor, uh, uh, lung cancer, uh, breast cancer, any form of cancer. Okay, uh, and that's why the wild card is in front. All right, I'm going to do this search first. It's going to give me a huge number. Okay, over 3 million. And this is way more than what I was talking about. We're far, very far from my 52 papers. So what I, I'm going to do now is there's one option to refine the search. Okay, so you can use the search within the search results. So there's a search here where you can search for a particular um, term. So let's say I'm looking for this particular chemical compound, apoxomycin. Okay. I can search and it has now brought my result set down to 93. From 3 million plus, it brought it down to 93. And that's 93 papers talking about apoxomycin in this topic. Now from here, I can do a few things. I can look at this list of results, sort this by date for oldest first. So I want to know when apoxomycin was first mentioned in this uh, set of results and go ahead and do that. And I found this particular article. So apoxomycin, a new 
still anti-tumor agent of microbial origin. Okay. So if I'm interested to look at this particular paper, I can go in, look at the authors, where are they from? When was it published? 1992. Look at the abstract and look at the uh, journal information. Okay, so which journal was it published in? From this paper, because it is the originating paper, this is where your starting ground. So now I want to know where, how has it been applied after it has been discovered. So I will start to explore the citation network. So from here, I can see it has been cited 165 times after its publication in 1992. I can click on this 165 to get me to the newer papers. So these are papers that have been published after 1992 that talks about apoxomycin. Okay, so these papers will give me an idea of how this has evolved over time. Okay. But before I do that, if I want to be able to retrieve the full text article, there is a few options. So there's a free full text from publisher, or if you have downloaded uh, EndNote Click, okay, so EndNote Click can be downloaded from here under products, EndNote Click, Okay, you download this, follow the steps and register for it, and it will be here. So you would see this purple tab. So if you want the full text article, this, as long as the purple tab appears, you can click view PDF. And this would be the full text article that you can retrieve. You can save it by downloading it to your PC or you can export this to your EndNote. Okay. So coming back to the record here, now if you're ready to explore um, what has happened after its publication, you can go to 165. And these are the 165 papers that have been published after the, this 1992 paper was out. Okay. So from here, you can use the filters to filter and see which are the highly cited papers. Okay. Or you can sort this list again by highest first, by citations. And you can see those that are very high citation counts. Okay. So if you want to filter this down to the two highly cited papers, you can refine. And this will be the two highly cited papers and you can select them and add this to your mark list or you save it to unfold. So unfold would be this one. So I have been do, using this uh, list for quite a while. So I have 3,463 that are unfiled, okay? but you can feel free to create a new list for yourself and link this as um, approximizing research, for example. So this is how you would create your mark list. Okay. So now, if you want to remove this filter, you can just click on this X to clear the filter and it would show you the 165 again. All right. Now from this 165 papers, a few things that you can do as well is to analyze this set of results. You can click on analyze results. And from here, you can, view where are these publications from, okay? which field. So these are the well science research categories. So you can see it has been in pharmacology, biochemistry, uh, hematology, marine freshwater biology. Okay? So if something catches your eye that is out of the ordinary, so perhaps because I was searching for uh, anti-cancer, anti-tumor and I was talking about apoxomycin, right? So this paper stands out because I'm like wondering, what has this got to do with marine freshwater biology? Okay. So if I'm keen, I can just limit to this particular record and view this paper and see how it has been mentioned. Okay. It, this way of exploration helps to spark ideas of um, alternative applications okay. because it might seem out of the ordinary. So you would want to go in and see what has happened. Why was this published? How is this relevant? 
this would then help you to identify potential uh, themes for your own research. Okay. So the web of science research category can be quite useful for finding novel ideas. The other thing that you could do is uh, who are, who's publishing this area of research? You can look either under affiliations or countries. So let's start with countries first. So which countries are publishing this area of research? Okay. And which affiliations? Right. If you're keen to identify collaborators, which are the authors? Okay. Um, if, you're, if you want to find out where to publish, so if, these are the, if this is the area that you want to publish in, you want to know where you can publish, you can choose publication titles here. And you'll be able to identify um, the publications that publish this topic. Okay. So th this is how you would use the analyze results feature. So let me just go back to my results, the 165. Okay. Now, in the event that you are applying for a grant and you want to create a citation report, you can click on citation report right here. And you can see the publication numbers over time and the citations. So this data can be uh, exported as a full report, or you can download this graph um, for publications or citations. Okay, so you'll download as a JPG file, uh, a JPEG file, and you can paste it into your uh, presentation or your document. Now, let me just go back to my search again. So coming back to the first page. Okay, so this is the topic search and you can use um, the various fields, filters to filter down your search results. You can even use a search within the search results function and you can use the analyze results function, citation reports function to do some analysis. Okay. Uh, we have another advanced search uh, capability here. So in the event that you want to do a specific string of terms, okay, um, you can use advanced search right here. So if you're keen to build your own search string, you can build it here. Okay, so you can choose topic you can choose say hydrogen energy, and then you add to the query. So once you've added this, it will start building the uh, Boolean search for you. So this is the advanced search query builder that I find is one of the biggest changes that we've done to advanced search this year, where it becomes useful for uh, laymen like myself. So I'm not, I'm not an expert. Most of the time, the reference librarians are the experts in Boolean searching. Okay? And it makes it less daunting to do Boolean searching using this query builder. So you can start building this query by just selecting, um, say, publication date or even document type. Um, so any field that you want, you can just put it in. Okay? So let me say year published. So 2020 to 2021. So you can use the end or or not connectors. Okay? So put end at the query and it will start building the Boolean search. So I'll just click on search and see what I get. So this is what I get and I can continue to refine my results further by using these filters or searching within the results. Okay. So let's say I want to do the storage search okay. and it limits this down further. Okay. And as you are building this search, okay, it can become quite complicated. And if you're working as a team, you might have co-authors, uh, teammates, and you want to share this with them. You want them to be able to replicate this exact same search as you. In the past, it was very difficult because you, there's no way to copy the link. Now we can, there's a copy query link feature here. And once you've copied it, I can paste it into my chat here. And I'm gonna share this with everyone. And you can then replicate this exact same search that I have just done, okay? So I've just pasted the link in the chat. 
So all you need to do is click on that link, get into Web of Science, and you'll be able to you replicate this exact same search for yourself. All right. Hey, um, the other feature that I wanted to explain was uh, if you see here, okay, as you're browsing through the search results page, you see this term searching, searching, searching. Okay, this is EndNote Click uh, working in the background. So it's um, if you've registered correctly and you've put in University of St. Carlos, you will be searching, we will be searching through the library subscriptions. And if the full text is subscribed for you, you immediately will be able to see that there is a full text available for this particular record right on the results page. Okay. The other feature that we have surfaced um, on the front is the citation network. So immediately you can have a quick look at the abstract. You can then decide whether you want to explore the citation network immediately from the search results page. Okay. The you may also like tab is also useful to show you uh, additional content that you might want to consider. So they, they might not uh, all be re um, related to this exact same search string. Okay, but they are related to this particular topic that you were looking at. Okay, so these are additional content that you might want to consider looking at. Okay. Going back to the search results, if you want to uh, limit this to open access, so there's an open access filter here. So you can filter this and refine. And this would be the list of open access articles. So articles that um, have free full text. The, uh, a new feature that we've just released, in, it is currently in beta, beta field, uh, format, we are gathering feedback, okay, is this feature called Enrich Cited References. So what this does is, if you go into this record, for example, and you see Enrich Cited References, we allow you, we have now given an opportunity for you to look at the references used and see how it has been mentioned in, in the text of the article. Okay. So uh, has it been mentioned in say the introduction, the methodology, theory, um, conclusion? Okay. So where has where has the list of where has all the references been mentioned in the text so that you know which are the references that are most impactful for um, further reading. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, it might take some time to uh, populate. Okay, but once it has been fully populated, you will see tiny little dots on the lines. Okay, so it would essentially show you where um, those references have been mentioned. So 101 have been mentioned in introduction, one in materials and methods, three in results, and you will be able to see um, on the graph here, the dots that represent each article. Okay. Besides that, the reference list also includes the citation counts. Okay. So if, there are, um, if you see that they have higher citations, it usually means that they, this particular reference is important to have a look. Okay. And out of which some of these will also have a link to the free food text. Okay. So it really saves you a lot of time in finding um, documents and being able to retrieve the relevant documents for your own research. Okay, the other few features that I will want to cover is the um, affiliation search. So in the event that you want to find a specific university's publications or even your own university's publication, you can choose affiliation. Okay. And you can just type in San Carlos, the University of San Carlos, and do a search. You can also add a row. So for example, if you want to limit this by a certain publication year, then you can do so. Okay. Otherwise, let's just search for USC. And you have 800 papers published. 
Okay? And these are all your publications. There are 15 that are highly cited papers. So you can select this and filter. So in the event that you might want to recognize this 15 highly cited papers from USC, then this could be one way for you to recognize your highly achieved, your, your, your uh, researchers that have good uh, results from their citation counts. Okay. So let's remove this filter. Hey, uh, if you want to do the citation report, so for this results, you can click on citation report and you'll be able to look at your publications over time as well as the citations. So in, for administrative purposes, if you want to track the citation counts for the articles, um, this is the report that you can export uh, for this purpose. You can also create an alert. So in the event that there's a new citation for USC papers, then um, an alert will be uh, sent to your email. If you want to be alerted of new papers indexed in the of science from USC, then the, the alert that you want to create is from this page, which is the search results page. So you can create alert right here. So this is searching for your own, uh, your affiliations papers. Okay. The next few um, areas that I will show you is the cited reference search. So cited reference search, um, it is essentially searching through the reference list of all the articles indexed in Web of Science. Okay. So uh, if you remember, we will index the article titles um, as well as the full reference list but not all references are indexed in Web of Science. Okay? So to, to help you understand this concept a bit better, okay, take for example, um, the Bible. Okay? The Bible is not indexed by Web of Science. So it will, not be a, a, it will not have its own record on Web of Science. But content from Web of Science do make reference to the Bible. So sometimes you want to see which content has mentioned the Bible in the reference list, then you, this is what, this is the feature that you would use to search. So you look for cited work, the Bible, and you do a search. Okay, then select all this and see the results. So these are the paper, these are the articles in Web of Science that have cited the Bible in their reference list. Okay. So these are the content. Okay, so this is the cited reference search that can be quite useful if you want to see um, how certain articles have been mentioned in the references uh, in the event that they are not indexed in Web of Science. Okay. There's also a structure search here. So if you're in chemistry and you want to do a structure search, you can do a structure search here. Um, I just name the chemical compound. So let's see, epoxymycin. Okay, you can do a search. I'm not going to draw the compound because I, I'm, I'm not in chemistry, so I don't know how to draw the compound, but I'm searching for the compound name. So if the compound has been mentioned in any of the text in um, Web of Science, it will surface here as a result, and there will be a link to the uh, article or the publication. So this is the structure search. Okay. Now I've done a lot of searches, okay? Um, and sometimes you might want to combine multiple searches together. So if let's say you want to combine search strings, uh, you can go back into advanced search and you can see your um, searches that you have done so far. And if there's anything that you want to combine together, you can just uh, clear this first. So clear this query first. You can add to query or, so let's see, add. And let's try this one. Okay. So you can combine this 
and do a search. Okay, so there are nine uh, papers published by USC talking about hydrogen energy. Okay, so you have combined essentially the two searches that you have done previously. Okay. Okay, so at this point, I don't see any questions from the chat. If anybody has any questions that they want to ask, you can need to unmute yourself and ask as well. Okay, um, but I've covered the documents. So before I move on to researcher searching, I wanted to make sure that all of you are clear on this aspect first. Okay, any questions? No? Okay. All right, just then, go ahead, Julian. Sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the next part is on researcher search. Okay, so in the, um, in the event any of you have published documents in Web of Science, because now you have access to Web of Science, I strongly encourage you to claim your own author record on the platform. Okay, uh, some of you might have utilized Publons before. So Publons is the public facing profile page. So it's actually free to, to use Publons. Okay, that's free. Uh, but that is public facing. If you want your Web of Science researchers to see your records on Web of Science as well, okay, uh, ideally you want to claim your Web of Science records too. Okay, now, uh, so Sapet, Sapet, I'm going to use you as an example. I hope it's okay. <laughs> oh no. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So um, we have actually simplified the search functionality where you can actually put in your full name. So you don't have to use your published name. Uh, you want if you you can if you want to, but uh, we have already got an algorithm in place to uh, search your full name, your published names your affiliation and your specialization. Okay. So once you have, we have typed in your name, the full name here and do a search, the system will pull all your papers together as a record. So this is your record as a pet. Okay. You, will, um, you will see that the pet's um, profile has a green tick. It just means that he has claimed his profile on Web of Science. Okay. So because he has claimed his profile on Web of Science, you would see um, a Web of Science researcher ID. Okay, so uh, what Sir Patrick is alluding to on the chat is to get a Publons ID is actually researcher ID. So Web of Science researcher ID will be the ID that you would be getting. Okay, so you will get a researcher ID and that is your unique ID on Web of Science. Okay. Once you have claimed your profile, um, you will be able to see your affiliations, your other published names, you can, there's a link to your public profile. So if you click on this view public profile, um, it actually takes you to Publons. Okay, so which, which is the public facing page here. Okay. Coming back to Web of Science. So on the Web of Science author page, author record page, you can see all your publications. Okay. Uh, if you've included the non Web of Science publications on your Publons profile, okay. Um, you are also able to filter and show the publications that are not on Web of Science. Okay. Uh, if you have done any peer review work and you've updated that on Publons, it will also show as a separate tab to show your peer review work, peer review work with journals. Okay. On the right-hand side, there will be publication metrics for the author. Okay. So the H-index, the total uh, time cited, the... Uh, author positions and uh, co-author network will be shown. Okay. Uh, we also have an author impact beam plot. So the author impact beam plot will show the, uh, the performance of the author in comparison to the other uh, authors in that same field. Okay. So we have um, grouped all their publications and put their publication performance based on citations into a percentile. Okay. and you'll be able to see their um, uh, range, uh, their performance. Okay. So I strongly encourage you to claim your profile. So how do, I, how do you do this? So I'm going to use a separate example. So let's come back to the author search. Clear this. Okay. I'm just going to use a 
an example. So I'm going to just assume uh, someone that hasn't claimed their profile yet. Okay. You will see that because this is a very common name, there's a lot of options. Okay, Usually if you do your own uh, name, it, there would, should not be so many. Okay. But it, you can also use some of these field refine options to limit this down. Okay. So I'm just going to use one example. So let's say this Ahmad A. Okay, I'm going to go into this profile. So assuming this is you, you want to claim this record for yourself, what you need to do is click on claim my record. Okay, claim my record, proceed to claim this record. It will open up Publons. So if you've already got a Publons account, log in to your Publons account. Otherwise, you can register for your own ID right here. Okay. So once you've logged in, so let me just click and log in here just to show you how to claim your papers. Did somebody unmute? Any questions? So once you have uh, logged in, you will be taken to your private dashboard on Publons and the papers that have uh, that you have on Web of Science will be brought over here, okay? So you select the ones that are you, your papers, and then click Submit so that you can claim those papers, okay? Um, I, as these are not my papers, I'm not gonna do that, okay? So I'm, I'm going to untick, okay? Uh, try, Please be careful when you're selecting your articles. Okay, don't do not just select all and submit. Okay, make sure you check each and every article and make sure that they are yours before you click on the submit button. Okay. Once you've done are that, it possible yes. for other people to confirm our publications. Sorry, come again. Is, is it possible for other people to claim somebody else's publications using this? Possibly, yes. So currently there, <laughs> okay. currently there is there is no option to block um, this from happening. Um, but it is not of benefit to the, the claiming author to claim somebody else's papers because this is a public profile. And if anybody uses this profile to, to just check their publications and they see, hey, this is actually not your paper because it's obviously a different name, then um, it tells badly on the researcher as well yeah. so um well, I, yeah. yeah so in case <laughs> that happens and uh, the rightful the, the true uh, author claims his papers would he be able to do it yes 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 okay yeah yeah so so um the the author so let's say for example if it's a multiple authored paper um there's let's say there's three authors so those three authors can all claim their, their, that paper. Okay. Uh, if you want to add additional publications, so publications that are not from Web of Science, um, you can do so from here, My Records Publications. Okay, I'm just going to leave. And uh, click on Import Publications. You can include the additional titles by, from using DOI or the article title. You can even synchronize this with your ORCID ID. So if you've already updated your ORCID with all your publications, you can synchronize them so that uh, all your publications will be, the, will be reflected on Publons. Okay. If you want to add your peer review work, so if you've peer reviewed for any journal, you can go to peer reviews. And add a review and just follow the instructions to fill in the details. Okay. So this is how you would update your profile. Uh, in the event that you have multiple affiliations, you can add multiple affiliations to your Publons profile as well. So you can go to affiliations, put in your institutional affiliations with a start date and end date so that it's reflected on the profile. Okay. 
Uh, in terms of the email that you want to use to register for this, um, you can use Hotmail, Gmail. So any email is possible because this profile will follow you through your career. So in the event that you leave USC, uh, you will still be using that um, Hotmail Gmail account, then go ahead and use that to register. Yeah. Um, but of course, if you want to change your email address, you can also do so um, under your own profile. Oops, sorry, it's not profile, it's under email. Okay. You can update your email addresses right here. All right. Okay, so for those of you who are going to click, go ahead and claim your profile on Web of Science, okay, just take note um, from the day that you click, click on claim your record, it might take up to a week to be reflected on the system. Okay, um, then you will be given a researcher ID and that will be the unique ID that follows you. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me see. Any other questions? Any questions about the researcher search? functionality and claiming your profile. No? Okay, then um, I'll share with you will be the um, support that you can look for uh, in the event that you get a bit lost and you want to know uh, how to uh, navigate Web of Science. There is always a, a resource center here on the bottom right hand side. So this question mark here. Click on this, you will be get, um, shown what are the latest product updates. So what is the latest thing that has been released? Okay. Um, there's also guided tours available. Okay. Uh, there's also more training. So we have this uh, Web of Science Essentials uh, course that you can take. So it's about an hour. Um, so if you want to re redo what I've presented today, okay, but at your own pace, okay, you can enroll for this uh, essentials course and do this online uh, self-guided learning. We also have a training portal, which allows you to get, um, to get the reference guides in PDFs, videos, uh, and so on, and sign up for things like webinars. Okay. If you have any um, access issues, okay, there's always this online help, so online help, you can submit an inquiry. Okay. Uh, there's also a data correction uh, option. So in the event that you realize that, hey, uh, my article has not been indexed correctly, it's not supposed to, or my name has been spelled wrongly, okay. you can submit a data correction to us. Yeah. Uh, let me see what else is there. Uh, because we are always looking to improve the platform, if you have any features that you want to suggest, I strongly encourage you to suggest a feature to us. Um, I, I really like this, even for myself, I use this because if I can open up the feedback portal and even if I don't have any ideas what to improve, I can actually vote. I can vote for what I think is most important. So there's a, a huge list of what others have suggested to include in the platform. You can actually put um, a vote right there so that it helps our product team to uh, prioritize which are the features that most users will want to see. Yeah. So if it's very important to you, I encourage you to put that, uh, do that voting as well. Okay. And I think that's about it. So we have about 20 minutes more. Um, I wanted to cover a little bit on journal citation reports today, but I think it will be best to leave it for next week uh, where I will elaborate uh, on how to identify the most suitable journal for your manuscript and how to um, uh, look for collaborators to make sure that you're publishing impactful content. Yeah. So that's about it from me today. Uh, 10 minutes available for any questions, comments. Sir Pat, any questions from you? Anything yeah, you want me uh, to <laughs> Jane, if you can click again on guided tours, for people who cannot wait until next week. Mm. I think they can find uh, where to publish uh, in the tour, right? Uh, there's document search, uh, there's search tools, but of course the uh, where yeah. to publish can also be found under the- Under 
Is it under this training? Part. Yeah, yeah, under training. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, next week, what I'll be covering will be uh, some strategies on how to identify journals. Uh, most mm. of the time, if you want to find journals, is it suitable for you or is it suitable for an article? Uh, some journals publish only reviews, some journals only publish uh, articles. So how do you use journal citation reports to identify some of them? Uh, same thing with open access journals as well. How do you differentiate? Um, which are the open access journals and which are not. Yeah. yeah I think that will be uh, very interesting for most people who are here. Yeah. So I hope to cover that uh, next week. Yeah. So any questions from uh, the I think students, graduate students, and uh, also faculty researchers here. Yeah. yeah. Probably one of the first things that I would, I would explain is uh, sometimes if you, after today's training session, you go back and try and do that same search that I've just done, you might come up with a different number of uh, results. So it could be because of your access. Okay, so let's, uh, let me just choose one. So perhaps I have 7,627 on marine biology here. Okay, and when you go back and search on your own uh, web of science, it looks like a different number. It could be because of the, um, the depth of your coverage for your subscription. Okay? So to, to verify your subscription depth, uh, what you can do is under here, there's additions. So you will be able to see from which year to present. Okay, So that's something that you, you can just check for yourself. Right? Uh, and that's about it. Mm -hmm.